Hi, hello, hey, welcome back to my channel or welcome if you're new here. My name's Laura. I cover anti multi level marketing, scams, unethical practices, that sort of stuff. So if that's your jam and you would like to see more, please stick around to the end of the video or wherever you get to. If you'd like to subscribe, please consider subscribing down below. Let's get into today's video. Also, I will go ahead and announce that I have finally reached 1000 subscribers. So thank you so much to all of my new subscribers and the ones that have stuck around with me on this journey for the past year. I really appreciate you guys. And since I have the watch hour time and everything, I am just waiting for YouTube to approve me so that I can be monetized. Thank you so much, guys. Just wanted to clear the air with that announcement. So today's video, I want to cover the a part two to the Monate sisters that I talked about previously in a couple videos. I We'll link that down below and in a card so that you can check that one out first if you haven't followed along with that. Basically, there is a top SED, top earner for Monate, and she has sisters, and one of the sisters uh, used to be an MLM but then had gotten away from it for various reasons. You can check out the video. And then she got pulled back into the MLM. Now, we don't we didn't really know a whole lot about exactly why. We had some theories on why she got back into the MLM based on the stories that we unraveled in the last one. I was not planning on doing a part 2 to this, but I have some new tea to spill, new stories and stuff. There's even an, an interview with both sisters, and we're definitely going to check it out. So I don't know how many parts this is going to end up being, but let's just go ahead and get into it because there's a lot of clips I want to cover. All right, let's take a look. So before we get into the video with both of the sisters, I want to look at one with the younger sister because it has a little nugget in there, if you keep watching, that highlights a little bit about whether or not her sister might have reeled her in to the to Monate again. So let's take a look. It is 11 something at night. I'm getting my daughter's clothes organized and getting her room set up because it's her birthday in the morning. I had to get on here. Okay, well, definitely looks like I've been crying. My mascara is going crazy. Okay, I... I'm truly in shock at Mon H training that they give us as market partners. You guys, I have been in multiple different companies, okay? The training that they give you as a new entrepreneur starting a business, you've never done this before and you like need advice. I've never seen, I'm, I'm doing my market partner academy for the first time. I didn't even do this one time. The last few times I signed up, literally, and I'm just shooken. Like, I'm like, this is the best company I've ever I just genuinely have to get on here and say, if you have a stigma to, like, MLM, like, maybe you're like me, you got burnt out, you tried everywhere, Sorry. you might have even tried money, and you're like, it was not for me. I'm telling you, it wasn't for me at one point, and I, I don't like how my eyes are looking. Um, it was not for me at one point. And then I, I truly like got connected with God. I really wanted to start my like women's coaching to bring them closer to God. And my sister talked to me and was like, do you understand? Like everything you are saying is what I'm doing, but I'm also giving people good hair that are balding people that have literally the biggest insecurities. I'm able to help them. And it was like a jaw-dropping moment for me that I'm like, why am I turning this up? Because of my own insecurities. And now, you got you know what? I was turning it away because I was scared. Listen, I'm going to be real, okay? I was scared that I... A couple things that she's bringing up is her not relating to the MLMs wanting to get out because it doesn't feel right. She was scared. That's how she's 
portraying it and also how Monate is suddenly the best MLM, best compensation plan, best everything when she's been in others that didn't work, others that were really bad. I think she's been in Hemp Works. I don't know what else she's been in. Um, I don't know if she might have been in Monate before too, uh, like I believe, but don't hold me to that. I don't really know. But um, her sister's high up in Monate and that's where all this comes to play. Let's see what she says next. I was going to join something and I was going to fail again. Because if I failed something again, I don't know how I would have handled it. I really don't. I'm very hard on myself. If I am not doing something and it's going really good. Girl, it's not you that's failing. Like you're joining MLMs and the MLM system is doomed or it's designed to fail. Based on my last video, you were doing pretty well in it, but you still felt like you were failing. And I think that speaks volumes in the fact that you can be anywhere on the pyramid and be like struggling for constantly having to recruit. Even if you're even if you're at the top, you're going to continue recruiting it. When you're when 99% of people are not making money or they're losing money, it is not a good system. They could argue that that's just not right. 99% of people don't work. I'm sorry, but 99% of people don't work is a horrible comeback to that because people do work. People work hard. It's just the way the structure is designed, not everyone can be making money with the system the way it is because it's oversat you have to recruit it's oversaturated you have to keep recruiting in order to make money like give me a compensation plan and I'll show you like break it down um, but I don't have time to break it down because there's a lot in this video so let's get back to it I think of myself as a failure and as just like complete rejection um, and it's been something I've struggled with my whole life. So this time I was like, you know what? I was like, sis, when I went over there, I wasn't even joining my sister's team. You guys as like. And with that said, uh, there's a lot of faith manipulation crossover. One of the things about this younger sister is she's very, very religious. And so she is take she takes a lot of her faith and her MLM meshes it so much together that it's just, uh, it's cringy. But let's this video before I go to bed because I just realized it is 1240. So like I was just cleaning the girls' room and it was 11 o'clock. Um, I want you to know one thing. <laughs> when you know God, okay. Here we go. This is the biggest thing I want to teach my team. Biggest thing. I don't care about how, mon how much money you make. I want to teach my team. I want to teach you right now if you're feeling this way. No matter how bad you're hurting right now, you do not have to turn to alcohol or cigarettes or whatever your coping mechanism is to get through it. Your finances, God will handle. You guys, there's been times that I have truly just said, Father, God just handle my finances, allow rent to be paid or whatever it was. All right, and our wedding, all the things, okay? When you seek God, and I'm not just saying when you cry out to him when you're sad, okay? When you learn that, like, it's having a relationship with him, I don't want to go to sleep because at night, I'm a mom of four, so this is my only time I get with Christ and, and just me. Like, it's my only salvation time to seek him and especially when I'm not in a rock and in a good spot and I'm, when I'm in a rocky place it's like oh my 
my gosh. I just want more women and moms and people to experience the feeling of Christ, our mighty Savior. That being said, I'm done organizing their room. I'm going to show it on my cleaning video. But if you're going through a tough time. Well, at least she's doing cleaning videos still. She mentioned something about that. But I, I believe she truly believes that she's helping people. I just also believe that there's a lot of manipulation going on. And it's kind of hard to avoid manipulation when you are in an MLM because you're you're really gung-ho about getting people to join you. And it gets sketchy. Whether you realize what you're doing is wrong or not. Right now, maybe you're like genuinely watching this going like, wow, God's speaking through me. Because you are just at a place where you don't understand what your next move is going to be. Or you are going through finances. You don't know how you're going to make it. Whatever it is, okay, whatever it is, God knows and you know. And I want you to know that he's just waiting for you to reach out to him. He's just waiting for you to say, I'm done doing this on my own. I need you. Hold up, is God trying to recruit me here? Like, it, that's what it sounds like. <laughs> that was a joke. Don't come after me. She's talking about God so much, I just kind of had to throw that in there. I myself am, am probably more spiritual agnostic and stuff, but I do look into religion and the Bible and stuff, and I'm open-minded to anything. But the way she spins God into recruiting with her MLM is toxic, whether she realizes it or not. You're stronger, you're mightier, you move mountains, and I know that you'll pave the way in my marriage, in my finances, in my friendships, in my life, in my chess. Editing Laura here. I just wanted to put out a trigger warning for this upcoming prayer. The only reason I'm leaving it in is because there's a lot of faith manipulation towards vulnerabilities and the business MLM as well. So there's some stuff about alcohol and drugs and being moms and all that coping stuff. Try to leave a timestamp or something. So that being said, I'm going to get on here. I want to say a prayer real quick. Heavenly Father, I just pray. I just ask that you allow the right people to hear this. Father God, everyone that you already have in plan, Father God, your, your daughters, your sons, to hear what they need to hear from this, Father God, to hear that you are protecting their finances. You are with their finances. They have not asked. They have not seeked you. And that once they seek you in their business, in their MLM, whatever they are doing, Father God, that you're going to provide. That you are our provider. You are our salvation. And that you are already taking care of them, Father God. I pray that you be with their mental health right now, Father God. I pray that you be with their mental health, Father God. That you allow... Father, just be with her mental health during this time. Father God, pave the way during these anxious moments. Father God, allow them to depend on you more now more than ever, Father God, than they ever would, Father God. I pray that you pave the way for the spirit of depression to leave in the name of Jesus, for the spirit of anxiety to leave in the name of Jesus, and for whatever battle the enemy is putting them through, Father God, that you will reveal to them that they are going through this because you have a breakthrough at the end of this, that you know that they are strong enough to handle this, Father God, that they wake up this morning and go, I am going through what I've been going through because I have a breakthrough. I have a breakthrough that only I can conquer because I have God. And I thank you, Jesus, for that. I pray that you're with them during this mental health attack. During, during this attack, Father God, that you can
can conquer, Father God. You can only conquer the marriages that are being lost right now, Father God, that are being divided and separated right now because of the enemy, Father God, because of the finances that people are struggling, Father God. They don't know how they're going to pay their bills, Father God, that they are turning to alcohol. They are turning to drugs. They are turning to tobacco. They are turning to all the things, Father God, because they don't know how to cope. Father God, I pray that you allow my testimony to speak to someone right now, Father God, that you allow my testimony to speak to someone, to allow them to know that they can get through this, that you are strong enough to get through this right now. You watching this, you are strong enough to get through this. God brought you to watch this for a reason, for a purpose. You are strong enough. You are going to get through this and you are going to conquer this, that the enemy is not winning this battle and that only Jesus is. Father, I just... Uh... I forgot that when I screen recorded, I did remember her doing a prayer. <laughs> I totally forgot about it. So I'm looking at this like, what just happened? The only reason I continued it was because she started talking about the MLM and the business in the prayer. I mean, if that's not faith manipulation, I don't know what it is. And on top of it, she hit on pretty much every vulnerability. I'm likely going to have to edit and add a trigger warning for people for that part. Oh my gosh, this is going to be several parts. <laughs> several videos, probably, because there's just so much to get into here. E <clears throat> oh my gosh. Ah, okay. So she she touched on a lot of things. I'm not going to rehash all of the things she said about various coping mechanisms and various mental health struggles because a lot of that is stuff that I have gone through and I will probably get triggered or emotional if I do start talking about that. So I'm not going to and other people might get triggered as well. So Let's just keep playing, but I did want to highlight that because of the mere fact that it takes religion and MLM and smushes it together as Exhibit A. Also, God does not want you to join MLMs. Jesus turned over tables. I'll link the Bible verse somewhere. Pray that you continue to open the doors of salvation, Father God. Whatever trauma the person that is watching this is going through, Father God, whatever you are going through right now watching this video, I want you to know that you are not alone, that God will allow you to forgive the people that you may think are unforgivable, that God will open doors that are greater than any doors you could ever experience. And he is just waiting for you. In the Bible, it says, ask and will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened to you. And he means that once you seek God and once you ask God for the forgiveness and for him to heal the heartbreak that you're feeling in your heart right now, God will do so. God will do so in a way that only he can do so. And you got to. OK, I can't believe I even missed it at the beginning. I was trying to figure out why was I trying to show you all this clip and this was the part that I wanted to show you before we watch the actual interview or live with both the sisters. It was not for me at one point and then I I truly like got connected with God. I really wanted to start my like women's coaching to bring them closer to God and my sister talked to me and was like, do you understand, like, everything you are saying is what I'm doing, but I'm also giving people good hair that are balding, people that have literally the biggest insecurities, I'm able to help them. And it was like a jaw-dropping moment for me that I'm like, why am I turning this up because of my own insecurities? So that's what I missed. I don't know how I missed it. I was, I guess I was listening to all the, the problematic things in these videos but she got out of the business and then her sister roped her back in and right here you can hear her saying that her sister said well don't you realize that's what you're 
that's what I'm doing in this business, in Monade. I'm helping people, balding hair and stuff, all these health claims and all these other things where her sister roped her in. Okay, so now that we've got that little nugget, let's watch the video with both of them in it. And since it's pretty long, I've got a lot of videos and a lot of tea to spill, so buckle up. But I'm probably going to end up having to make a part three, a tale of two Monate sisters, something like that. A little bit about, it's funny because before a little multi-millionaire um, was a thing, I begged her, but I was like, sis, we got to wrap you. You got to try this. And she was yeah. like, no, like, no, <laughs> that, no, I'm not getting into that business. And I, I was, um, I wasn't successful until I was. And I like to say that because um, hemp works came to my life and uh, that it was the CBD oil. And I just, I mean, I soared. My team grew to like thousands of women. Um, I was number seven in the entire company. I was flown out to speak and I had a lot of hurts. Um, and it, I'm not saying specific companies, guys, but like, I, I mean, I, I was hurt. Like, I was flown out to speak on stage and receive trophies and me and my team flew out and they drove out whatever it was and they like literally didn't even have our trophies. They they didn't have us speak on stage. Like everything that was like it was really hurtful because we work so hard yeah. for a company. Um, yeah. Oh, I forgot to mention before we get too into it, the younger sister on top is breaking up a lot in this live so it may be kind of hard to understand every word she says but you can get the gist of it and if it does bother you I do apologize <laughs> but that's on that was on the live it was just like it's on her end it, it, it it's like your boss no, well your I boss. remember you being always talking about because this was in my early days in money and you were like the recognition is like baffling like what did you get you got that in the mail I mean and this was like the I, very beginning yeah, like that said to me guys in a million pieces like it, it was completely shattered they didn't wrap it up in bubble wrap or anything and I remember opening it and I just was like sobbing because I was like, oh my gosh, like all I wanted was this trophy and I'm going to try not to like mommy. cry. And it's just because I'm so mommy, grateful to be, mommy. you know, with a company, of course I'll help you baby with a company that like, that was the biggest thing with mom. I, I saw her. Well, and I think for anyone just tuning in that heard, like all I wanted was the trophy was there's a lot of backstory to that. Absolutely. You didn't have, I mean, really support at all. Um, she struggled a lot with, obviously, the, you know, and, and here's the thing. You know that quote, people work harder for praises than raises? Like, and it's not just, oh, I want to be recognized. I want to this. Like, when you're putting your heart and your soul into something and you're growing this insane business and this insane team, it's it's one thing that Monet has always made a priority is to recognize every ounce of every single person's hard work. I want to define what that means. Recognizing every person in Monet as they like achieve something or join or any of that stuff would be considered love bombing. It's a form of manipulation. They may not see it that way. They may see it as loving everybody and helping everybody and being such a tight-knit community. The problem is that when you are showered with love and praise, as they say, and trophies and awards for achieving stuff, you stay in the MLM longer. And the longer you're in it, the more indoctrinated you are. These people are very indoctrinated into the MLM world because they've both found success. When you find success, you hang on to it. By success, I mean they have recruited enough people and built their team so that they are making money and achieving things. Love bombing is a way to keep people more invested into the company. It's not necessarily a bad thing to 
be kind and love people that you work with, but they do it in such a way that it's over the top, really hype someone up to feel like they belong and that they can stay with it. And I don't even think it's just direct sales. I think it's jobs in general. When you're the number one sales girl at any job or anything, you know, you get employee of the month or you get this or you get that. And I mean, imagine if you were getting something for every milestone that you hit. I just said how it's different from other jobs because like I said, it's good to get praise once in a while from work to let you know that you're doing a good job and to make you feel validated for being there, right? For putting in the effort into a job. The difference is that with Monate and with other MLMs is that it, like I said, it's over the top. They make it a commitment to show all of the people at the top getting awards and getting luxury items and stuff. It's a lifestyle. It's it's hyping up the dream of achieving those awards. So it's a lot more of that and less of just recognizing someone's good work. I hope that makes sense, but we're going to continue. And that's kind of, you know, where that came from. Exactly. Um, so yeah, a lot. And then um, just... There was just a lot of back with, with MLMs that I, I promised things in multiple different companies. You know, I left work to be with another company and I totally like what I feel like I even back now and I'm like, oh my gosh, like I'm damn, like I was. Uh, just to pause there, it kind of cut out, but she said that she was scammed. She left HempWorks to go to another company and she realized that, oh my goodness, I was scammed. So she's talking about how other MLMs didn't work for her. She failed. It, she was scammed. Yet Monate is different because her sister's in it. And of course, it can't be bad. Often when you're in an MLM, you think that it must be that specific business that's causing the problem or something when, when you don't succeed. So then a lot of people will MLM hop and they will go to another MLM in hopes that maybe... It's not the business structure, and maybe it's just the one that they were in. Because all the MLMs will say, like, for instance, when I got into Arbonne, they said, oh, we're not like those other MLMs. We're different. We're good. Like, we are an MLM, a network marketing, but, but we are, we're a good team, and we're, like, we're so different. But all MLMs are the same. They all have that structure to it that causes people to like somebody has to fail. Somebody has to lose. And by somebody having to lose, it's usually like a great majority, 90, 75 to 99% of people. I promised all these things and and it was just like I had to So being with Monate now, you guys I wasn't ready. And maybe you're in a spot right now where you don't have enough confidence in yourself because you feel like you have failed. But you are not your past failure. You are past yeah. failure. So you could sit here and you could dwell in them. But I, or maybe you feel like you're failing business because you're constantly playing the comparison game. The moment your success is going to happen is the moment that you block out other people. And you, instead of... of Getting envious and jealous like the enemy wants you to when you start going hey Tony like good job you're inspired yes. us. you're yes inspired. I'm gonna do this because you're part of my inspiration and that's what I you know I I did this training on um trading in comparison for congratulations and every single thing and you know we're talking about this right now you guys because that is what held my sister back from joining this business and becoming. You know, I do agree on the com the comparison thing because comparison and competition, I, I've struggled with that as well. And I think that one of the things is that comparison can hinder your creativity and your own um, personal strength because you're too busy looking at how others are. And I think in MLMs, it's even worse because you're constantly comparing yourself to the other people because 
you're told when you join that you'll get all of these things that you'll be able to pay off debt or pay off bills and stuff like that and or have a side hustle or even a full-time job or like get a car get a trip like live a luxury lifestyle or just pay the bills whatever it is they tell you all these stories about what you'll get and when you aren't getting them it is pretty easy to look at other people and compare what they got because you might look at your upline and see that they got a trip but you didn't but you know what's really really funny about that is that you helped your upline get that trip now there's a shocker for you <laughs> you know the successful leader that she's going to be in this company and i'm just I really, really am. I'm so, so excited for you. Um, I'm so proud of you because it takes a lot of recognizing things in yourself. Oh, to yeah. That place to say, oh, you yeah. know what? I am comparing. Absolutely. I am, you know, jealous. I am envious. I am reaching these places and being burned by, you know, or feeling burned by other direct sales companies. And yeah. getting into another one. And I think that that's a really big topic that I want to touch on right now is I won't argue with people when they say, you know, the direct sales world is, is schemy. It is. There's a lot of companies that are. There's a lot of companies that are. They require monthly minimums. Your company is schemy. You're wearing a Monate hat. Your company. There's quotas. There's... You know, I mean, there's some companies that you get someone to join you. And I mean, I just recently found this out about one of the car programs in another really popular MLM company that if, let's say I signed you up under me, Destiny, and you started doing better than me, your volume would not count towards my volume of getting my car because you outranked me. You guys, there's that kind of stuff that is so shady. And do you remember when you didn't get paid because your your legs oh, you had to have like two legs that, or whatever? That broke my heart. And honestly, you guys, um, that is another thing. I had one leg, right? So I signed up a rock star. And it wasn't just signing up a rock star. It was how much I poured into this person, right? Like, yeah. I mean, I poured into my girl, Tanya. I hate it when they say poured into. It's just, ugh. I don't like it. It's weird. But on top of that, she's talking about HempWorks. And HempWorks, I haven't done much on that, but I do remember that back when I was in my MLM days and I was looking for a switch to MLM Hop from Usborne Books to Arbonne is what I ended up with. But I, before Arbonne, I was looking into HempWorks and they're also known by My Daily Choice. You might have heard of them that way. They're really sketchy. And I did, I did not like what I saw when I was looking into them. From what I could tell, I'm like, I don't feel right about that. And you know what's funny is that by looking into them and seeing how sketchy they seemed on the surface before I even, like, without even really joining them or anything, that actually helped my Arbonne upline persuade me to join Arbonne because I was telling her about the Hempworks thing and how I got an icky feeling about it. And she turned it around like, we're nothing like that. We are not schemy. We are a good MLM, which is kind of an oxymoron there, in my opinion. And oxymoron it just means they're opposites. Like, good and MLM anyway. Okay, so back to this that she's talking about hemp works and I I don't really know a whole lot about it, but when they they were trying to explain the the leg system to me like when I was considering joining, they had like this whole video and stuff and it was so complicated and you had to get a certain number of people under you. I'll have to look into it, but it's really complex. So it's kind of hard to 
kind of hard to explain, but I'll, I might look into that. I've got a whole list of things to look into, but that is pretty complicated. What she's talking about, I, I get that. However, Monate is also scammy. It's just that I do agree that HempWorks is probably scammier as an MLM, but that doesn't mean that, like, they're all scammy, in my opinion. You got to join me, okay? I'm ready for you. But she, I mean, she's on fire. She's a yes, best. Tanya, we're ready for you. <laughs> I know you got that MLM hurt, girl, but you go sore here. Um, so, genuinely, she she was, like, way up there. And then I let down, and nobody told me that I only got um, So my check was like literally seventeen thousand dollars, and it was not even eleven hundred. And what is going on in there? Wow. Like, well, you can only have this. Your legs have to be even, and it was just like, what? Yeah. What? Like nobody told me this, and I signed up like over here, like so. It's yeah. Like a year of return. Well, you look at Monique's comp plan, and it's, like, so yeah. simplified. It's, Simpl like, the most simple, straightforward, this is what it is, this is what you get, you put in this, you get this, here's the roadmap, let's go here, let's do this, and I... I, I mean, Monique's comp plan is simpler than HempWorks, I'll give it that, but... <laughs> you get paid several different ways, but you only get paid one way for sales and the rest is all recruiting. And since recruiting is the issue here that we find in anti-MLM, recruiting is the issue because recruiting is how you make the money. You can't do it on sales alone. I think that, you know, that's why, I mean, I was a complete anti-MLM because I was a small business owner and I just had this ego and I was like, I am a real business owner. I think direct sales is where like the fake entrepreneurs are. Yeah. And you guys, yeah. I, and there, there's no, there's not a business on the planet. I highly, she's lying. I highly doubt she was anti-MLM. If you know all of the anti-MLM stuff that I do or that other creators do, you'd have to really like go against ethics to rejoin, like to join an MLM after being really anti-MLM. Maybe she was just hesitant of MLMs and then joined. Like maybe she was thinking certain things about MLMs because of what she heard and stuff and then joined. But to be actually anti-MLM and to know what goes on in those, all the misleading facts, all of the things that people say that are false or ridiculous, the facts that the fact that people don't make money in it, that like less than 1% of people actually succeed in MLMs, these kinds of things, no. I don't, I don't buy it. That can literally do what this business has done for my life in the last four years. Okay. I um, went from being in so much debt, like so much debt that I didn't even know how much debt I was in. Yes, you guys like literally, and I'm sorry, <laughs> not sorry. All right. But I was there for it all being like yeah. pregnant daughter or sister, my sister. Watching Jesse get up at literally, like, before, it was, like, 3 in the morning. Like, he would go yeah. to bed, wake up immediately, and I and watch my sisters make bougie koozies. Watch her hot glue them, decorate them, sell at the river on the boats. And I was there for her selling, like, her, like, all of the things, like, the toys in the garage and stuff. Yeah. Like, I, what? Whatever the company was, like I know, I don't understand that you guys. She never gave up, and same with me with the success I have now. It's because I did not give up. She is not giving up. When you give up on yourself, you give up on your dreams, and you give yeah. up your dreams for everyone else around you. So when you sit there and you might look at her and you might what I've done for years, and, and I've said I don't understand. 
how she does this. I can't do it. And I don't know why I can't do this. And I watched her and I watched her envious. I watched her with jealous. And then I got like rage there because I, I'm not good enough. So, um, I was like, I'm not good enough. I can't do what she does. And I didn't understand it. And it drove me crazy until I started saying, I am going to do it. I care about is 24 7. I don't care if I have to go around to salons. I don't care. I'm showing up. I'm going to show up with my baby or whatever. My family deserves this. Yes. I'm not going to give up on my. They mean more to me. So the moment you. Okay, I have to pause because one of the things that she said in the first video that I covered was that she was stepping away from MLMs because of her family, because she wanted to be able to spend more time with her family and not always on her phone constantly messaging people and stuff with MLMs. So she actually said that the reason, one of the reasons she was stepping away from the MLMs was to spend more time with family. So hearing her say that she, she's not giving up on her dreams because of her family, she's doing the opposite in MLMs and not giving up on her dream, doing all of the stuff because of her family. <laughs> so I just found that kind of an interesting development. All right. Editing Laura here. I just wanted to let you know that I will be doing a part two to this because the video was really getting long. So there will be another part to this same call that I will be releasing in addition to other parts on the sisters in general that I've collected. So a lot more. Stay tuned. All right, guys, that's going to be it for today's video. Please stay tuned as I continue to dive into the development with these two Monate sisters. A tale of two Monate sisters. Stay tuned. I'll let you know with more info as I go. Until next time, thanks for watching.